Singh and I have the honor of being able to present a video that uh, well um, that presents an interview with the teacher of Master um, Stephen Contes the promoter of the uh, Nick Screamers event that took place in Orlando in July 2015 the biggest uh, Kung Fu martial arts event on the worldwide circuit um, that uh, it, again it was amazing an amazing event uh, I had the pleasure of getting an interview with the gentleman you see performing the um, straight sword the Jian, um, during Tai Chi Chuan Fa um, exercises and uh, he's just an amazing guy this very uh, um, powerful <laughs> but uh, elegantly spoken and calm um, and welcoming presence that exists within a, a very small man of, of, of size but of stature and of presence and civility very large I had the, uh, had the rare pleasure of asking some very very important questions for seasoned adepts um, with regard to understanding what style Tai Chi is really all about and this gentleman that you're about to meet his name is Master or I should say Grandmaster because he has masters who train under him but I'll say to Sifu just to, for argument's sake uh, Sifu Cam Lee um, was a uh, like I said before, he, he told me he discusses all kinds of stuff uh, with regard to uh, the idea of martial training from the Chin style, the idea of uh, Wajia and, in, and Nasia training, the idea that uh, uh, Chin style is not only elegant and not only powerful, but it's also um, refining and cultivating for the spirit, the mind, body, and spirit. And uh, of course, you can see that this is expressed in his ability to transmit energy um, in a sword form um, and to do so in such a way that keeps your eyes on him at all times. Um, so I hope you enjoy this interview, it's rare. Uh, of course, you donated in order to see the video so and to listen to these pearls of wisdom that he's about to drop on everyone. And uh, I'm just really happy that, that to be able to present this to you all. So. Get out your notepads and pen. Uh, he's very quiet and soft-spoken, so turn your speakers up. Um, and again, uh, enjoy the video. And I surely hope that uh, we get a chance to uh, discuss this in the uh, rooms of the Temple Underground Magazine and Journal, Temple Underground Advanced Group, Study Group, or Temple Underground Revolution, and maybe even Tai Chi Connection. Enjoy. It's G. We're here. As a matter of fact, you know my patent. When I get there, I always fold the leg. <laughs> okay. It's G, Temple Underground, guys. You ain't going to believe who I got. I got Cam Lee. I've got William Miller's, okay, and Steve Contis' teacher right here. Okay, now he's a little humble guy, and what I'm going to say about him, uh, he's going to probably fringe and not want to hear it, but he's a healer, and he's a, and he's a martial artist. He is the quintessential Kung Fu man with regard to an individual coming from Asia, Malaysia specifically, coming to the United States for various reasons, but the most important reason is to share what he knows with the individuals here and grow in the process, okay? We don't get a lot of individuals like that that we interview for Temple Underground Radio, Temple Underground Magazine, or Temple Underground Journal, but we got it here. And we're going to discuss, not discuss, but hear his side of the story with regard to um, the most important thing I have learned in this sojourn in this last week, and that is the root, the foundations for all family lineages, which begins with the Chin style. And the Chin style is special for lots of reasons. Those of you who have read the illustrated explanations of Chin family Tai Chi Chuan understand that silk grilling for Chin Zen is one of the most essential aspects of healing and essential aspects of growth, okay, and power. I experienced that power. That power moved me all over the room, <laughs> moved me all over the floor. And it's done in such a way that it had nothing to do with physical strength. Of course, that means, yeah, it means something. It had to do with skill. He's also going to talk a little bit about the healing aspects of what the Chin style is all about. 
Okay, maybe even a little bit about where he's from and what his philosophy of Tai Chi is, which I got the privilege of listening to. But also, he's going to talk about the sword. You know, I love the sword. Okay, so he's going to talk a little bit about that and why that's important, not only as a martial artist, but also as a healer. Hi, it's very Hi, nice to meet you. Morning. It's good to talk to you. Good morning today. Oh, and I'm a referee. I'm refereeing in the biggest tournament in the country. Okay. All right, so here we go. Sifu, when we're talking about um, uh, Chen style Tai Chi, real brief history, your lineage. How did you get here? How did you get here? Well, I first came here knowing uh, martial arts Kung Fu uh, started in 73. Uh, as I trained, I uh, realized that I needed to train more and know more about Kung Fu. So I was interested in Tai Chi. So uh, when I came to the States in uh, 81, 82, I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. So uh, there wasn't any Tai Chi teacher. So I started to look around uh, for Tai Chi and started with training young style Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. yeah. So after that, uh, teacher left and then I uh, trained with uh, Chen style Tai Chi in the 1990s. Uh, and after that, my interest in Chen Tai Chi grew until I met my teacher, Grandmaster Shi so Chen Tai, in 1999. And then when I, I went to Boston to train in Tai Chi, Chen Style Tai Chi. Chen Style Tai Chi. Um, <clears throat> why did you settle with just Chen? Do you influence Yang Style at all in your Chen Style, or are you completely into the lineage that you were taught in Chen? Yeah, I think uh, Chen style give me a, a, an aspect where uh, it bring me closer to nature. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good question. That's a good leading one. When you practice, do you like to practice indoor or do you like to practice outdoors when you do your, your training, sir? I both. When it's outdoor, uh, sunshine is good for your chi. <laughs> if it's raining, it's <laughs> indoor. <laughs> You're on the your your uh, your training is on an island. I believe your 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 dojo is on an island in Jacksonville, Florida, right? Fleming oh, Island, yeah, it's called Fleming yeah. Island, uh, okay. and it's a big place. It's just connected by a bridge mm. to the mainland. But it's on the water. Uh, beach. All the Florida land is <laughs> that's true on the water. That's true. <laughs> but you can't beat that. That's true. In the tournament today, I saw that you had some people in there. I met, I met Will, and I met uh, Will, Will, Miller, Will Miller. You're going to hear, but you were, I were talking about Will. Uh, Will Miller, Sifu Miller, and his son, okay, uh, Izzy, he actually won a championship. Um, he's in your lineage, he's at the meet you and so forth. Do you have any students directly in your school that are competing or have competed and done well, or at least if they've done well, I don't care if they won, but if they do well. Did you have any? Uh, yes, yes, they have, uh, I have quite a few students. Oh, okay. And my son also trained uh, Kung Fu as a uh -huh. So uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of times I got a grand champion from this tournament. That's all right. And yesterday, one of the students got a sudden grand champion. Also. Oh, my goodness. This is a big deal, guys. Again, this is the biggest. This is, uh, when I say biggest, that means more people from all over the world come to this particular one for the whole year. So to be invited here. From a traditional Chinese uh, martial arts standpoint, very, very important. So, um, the healing. We talk about the fighting. Well, actually, no. Let's talk about Silk Road. Really. I want. He's not talking to me, even though I'm asking the questions. He's talking to you. Why silk reeling is so important, the way the Chen people do it. Now, you know me, I'm a boxer. You know I have a great silk reeling. You know it healed me because I talked about my experiences. This is different. Mm -hmm. so Whatever it's worth, this is different. Silk reeling. So. Yeah. When we look at the force uh, in nature, a lot of people uh, doesn't realize that uh, one of the force is a spiral force. Okay, so in the beginning, for example, uh, as an analogy, uh, before the bullets were made to fly straight. Okay, so they can only fly a certain distance and they will die down. It's called the force dies away. But with silk reeling, uh, you learn how the force spiral as it travels. So as it travels, it creates a more force because when things turn, it has the natural energy of yin yang turning. So with this turning force, it creates more power. 
and the more natural force uh, when you apply. So nowadays the bullets are made to spiral as they travel, and they can travel faster. So that's a part of a nature, natural force that a lot of people doesn't realize how to use it. That's why silk breathing, uh, you train how to develop that energy in your body mm -hmm. and have it rooted into the ground. And then when your body turns, your arm also turns. So that is uh, what we call a, a big turn and a turning within the circle. And that is the silk breathing force. And everybody uh, has it, they just sometimes uh, doesn't realize that they have it. Got to refine it, got to find it, refine, refine it, it and understand it. it. Yeah. And then when you cultivate it, you develop a, that silk breathing force in your body. And then when you do techniques or application or anything like that, uh, then you realize that it's very effective. Yes, um, you guys are going to see it in the video, you've always seen it. Um, I always thought that people that were good at push hands, most of them are not very good at striking. Okay, I'm a striker, you guys know I'm a striker. But I found out with Will Miller, um, that experience, that striking is very, very, very good. and It could be done anyway. Uh, Will was able to take me and work me. When I tried to turn, he forced my energy down. When my energy was down, I tried to spring back up, but he wasn't there. And when I sprang back up, he went to go do a throw. Okay, and you know, what do you do with that? He also had, he didn't pong, he doesn't pong from here, he pongs from here. Okay, so he comes here, comes around and brings it in. And when he did it, believe me guys, I felt, I was flying with him. And I could, when he said the thing, he explained it to me, it's just like the seafood, you may have seen his eyes when he was talking. When he was talking about silk really, he was actually thinking it. And when he was thinking it, then there was a certain intensity. I'm not going to say aggression, but there was definitely an intensity. Did you see it? I know you saw it. In the way he was talking, he said it's a, it's a turning and it's a force. My question to the Sifu is that force has a nature of its own, doesn't it? It's yeah, it's, uh, it's nature itself, actually, because uh, in nature, you're talking about uh, two extremes, yin yang. Yin yang in the beginning, it doesn't mean actually balance, it just means two forces, extreme force. One is passive, one is a little bit more aggressive. That doesn't mean it's good or bad in either of them. Okay? So that's yin yang. However, because of survival, human being, we realize that we have to be a little bit balanced, how to control ourselves so that we don't go out of balance. So we put a little dot into the circles of the black and the white part, and then make it a balance. So mm -hmm. when we're training Tai Chi Chuan, we adhere to this motion movement principle when you can realize how not to fall into error is because of this principle not too much not too little not too soft not too hard not too high not too low uh, however you in Tai Chi Chuan you have to realize and demonstrate these two aspect of Tai Chi there's yin yang in the spiral energy, you also have these two yin yang force. Yin chen to yang, yang to chen to yin, yin chen to yang. That's a big deal, guys. Remember uh, Nadia Shemakova, my teacher and the Russian teacher, I talked about how she was trying to correct me. She was saying, I was always saying yin or yang, and she kept saying, no, 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 no. Yin is yang, yang is yin. Yin is yang wanting to be, yang is yin wanting to be. It's always one. You just confirm that it's the same thing. It's just changing. It's just changing, and it's the changing is the thing that messes us. That's why he said, "I forget." I've got to say this before I move to the next subject. He said, "The most important aspect of Tai Chi in your journey is an open mind." An open mind, yeah, to be able to uh, see things as they are and then investigate. Mm. And uh, we try not to just read from books or just hear from people and believe you know, like always you know, take the statement and experience experience investigate uh, just like the Buddha said you know like the anything you hear anything you read anything you see uh, don't take it in the first hand first but only after investigation and we realize that it's good it's true it's natural 
then on the U.S. That's, I just got a lesson right there. I was wondering why people, when I touched them, when I wanted to meet them with a, a lot of love and a lot of softness, why they, no matter what you guys believe, you said, is G real? So you went, <clears throat> you want to find out if it's real, it's there. The Sifu says that's a natural thing. If you're on a journey, you're supposed to experience it. He says, that's the Buddha. And you know, that's the Buddha in everybody. So experience is important. One experience that's very important for us to understand is the power of healing. Because we don't fight and we don't train in fighting so we can fight. That's, of course, part of being a human being, but that's not the whole equation. We do it to find out who we are. We do it to cultivate ourselves. To, to, we fight not because we're fighters. We fight to find out who we are. And we train in this way. We also have to learn to heal. First ourselves in here and there and there and then others. And this man knows how to do that. He has a philosophy of that because he became a Kung Fu and then a Taiji and then a healer. So in, in that journey, sir, what was the most important? And I, I'm going to say this. We all should probably move like that based on your personality, either one way or the other over there. So what was your experience and what would you recommend to people? Yeah, everybody's up. Would you recommend that people experience all three of those? Would you recommend that people eventually do learn to heal? What do you have? What's the message you have for us who are born? I think the uh, one of the more important uh, things we need to acquire in this life, number one, is the understanding of what makes things as they are and what are the kind of things that change. And when we try to find out, we always uh, come back to the understanding or trying to understand what is Tai Chi. Mm. So Tai Chi is just two opposite forces reacting with each other. Okay. So pertaining to, uh, let's say, universe. One of the philosophers in China said that universe is an oscillating forces of yin and yang qi. Then you ask yourself, where does this qi come from? What makes qi? So after doing acupuncture, training Tai Chi for so long, uh, to make it simple, I think, from my experience, qi is a product of emotion. Wow. So a lot of people, uh, it's difficult to explain what qi is. You can explain to a judge what qi is and how you do acupuncture and, and make the force of qi circulate in the body. So I think uh, in the simple term, uh, qi is like a product of motion. You move well, the qi is good. You move badly, the qi is stuck. So when it's stuck, you try to unstuck, unstick it. Mm. So to make things move. As things move, then what we call stagnation of problems. This person, and when she moves, then it flows. When it flows, things survive. It goes on. Mm. Did you hear that, guys? Yeah, I got real pensive and real still because first I thought he said, um, it, uh, "What is chi? Chi is emotion." I thought he said emotion. So my mind was stuck. I said, "My goodness!" And because that reminds me of what another person said, but he said, "No, what he was saying is motion. Chi is motion." The product of motion. The product of motion. What is the product of stillness? I mean, that's a, and I, I, it may not be a question you want to answer right now. You don't have to. It happens to be a uh, Chen Zing said that power doesn't begin in healing or anything until you have mastered stillness. And of course, you just told me that yin and yang is the product of each thing. So motion and stillness exist together. One is hidden. And one is fulfilling or being becoming. In your opinion, in the motion aspect, in the stilling aspects of motion, why is that important to us? Stillness, I think, is the slowest part of motion. <laughs> I like that. When you are still in the slowest part of chi or motion, it develops calmness, quietness, which is another side of a human. If you do fast motion, then there's the opposite of stillness. But to make things balanced, you must have. Uh, in stillness, 
there's a small tug of war. There's motion will back out to demonstrate this. Still, there's a tug of motion. So, that's why in Tai Chi Chuan, you don't go to an extreme power, like pushing your arms straight all the way. Is that too, what we call it, yeah? Because you can break your elbow right away. But there's a little softness within this heart. Okay. When you are soft, it doesn't mean you really weak or collapsed now. But that's too soft. Okay. When it's too soft, then it cannot be used also because energy is <coughs> stuck. So in stillness, there's always a little bit of uh, motion. I call the intention of a motion release. And in motion, there's a little bit of the intention of stillness. Yeah. So you have to dis be able to display this stillness and get to the what we call the uh, most part of it. Like being yang. Uh, you demonstrate yang, you have to demonstrate power. You cannot demonstrate like half, half power. Okay, so You're right. So in Tai Chi Chuan, when you do the form, you should have the aspect of a uh, hardness. The Sifu has students that touch me, I've mentioned this again. One of the things that kind of shook me up because I wanted to meet them, almost everybody, I've always wanted to meet them soft, and I say soft, I'm round, I'm firm, but I don't want to give any impression of aggression. Let me tell you something. When I touch a Chen guy, the first thing he lets me know is that he's powerful. As soon as he goes in, he sits. He is there. And then from there, let's work. And that's something I wasn't familiar with. I, I've never really experienced that <coughs> in push hands. I never experienced that really hardly in anything except boxing. Real Western boxing. I like to dominate. But in Chen style, they don't dominate, they dominate their space. They're there, the space is there. And from there they work. And they feel where you're going from. Anything if you uh, if you understand Tai Chi and know how to use its force and knows how to be soft and know when to be hard, then it's easier to <laughs> counter you know, another sword or to be able to use it you know, effectively. The sword, um, you actually, t we, we talked about healing. Um, if you had to suggest to an individual in my, my audience in the healing aspects, what they, where should they begin? Where should a person who's a martial artist begin with regard to Learn about the healing. <coughs> to learn uh, more about the healing, you have to understand the aspect of uh, the principle. Tai Chi. Yeah, tai Chi. Yeah. You have to, uh, you know, read or experience and understand what is Tai Chi. But first, you must have the goal. Yeah. In the healing, do you want to be healthy? Okay. Healing is mostly they want to have a good health. Yeah, the other part is a martial art. We want to have a great martial art. But both falls under the uh, principle of a Tai Chi. So in healing aspect, the first thing is not to fight things, but to go with the flow. Okay? Yeah. Meditation is very good for healing. Mm, meditation is very good for healing. Important part of uh, life, everyday life, in healing, we must always watch what we put into our mouth. Mm -hmm. That's a digestive health. So, in all my years of uh, acupuncture, I realized that there are mostly three things that can give a person the problem. The first one here is digestion. Mm. Okay. Uh, what you eat. So we usually tell them to avoid sweet, ice, milk, fried, and acidic. Say it again. Is it, say it again. Fra sweet, sweetness, sweetness, like chocolates mm -hmm. and M&M and artificial sweeteners. Ice, ice, sweetness, ice, ice, cold drinks. Ice, cold drinks. Avoid that. That is uh, milk. Milk. Because in milk in America now they have a lot of. Uh, Hormones, preservative, and they got, you know, like antibiotics. Milk. Okay. Before it's fried food, it's very uh, uh, 
what people now are not doing it too and grease it, make their blood stick. It makes things motion slower. Yeah, and you get things stuck. Okay. The fifth one is uh, most people do is alcohol and soda. Alcohol and soda. Yeah, so these five things, if you can avoid it, it can already help you at least 30 to 50 percent of the health. <laughs> Yeah. And you can also lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me, guys. Hey, that's, that's all the things you talked about, are things that I had to get rid of because you know I was sick for a while. So. Um, but actually, the purging of that, this is cool. The purging of what he just talked about, the digestion, which is the digestion is feeding the lower jaw. You don't feel exercise. And the, see, full ribs, digestion and exercise feeds this. Okay? Talking like we're talking. And, and reading beats this. Yeah. So the first thing to help is digestion. The second is the exercise. The third is mental. Uh, don't get too stressed. Yeah. So don't hold things back, especially emotions. So you've got to learn how to let go of emotions and not let them tie you up. Tie you up. Stop motion. Yeah. So anything that gets stuck, you have a problem. So anything that flows, it flows. And when it flows, you must know how to flow evenly and balanced. That's all. The knowledge and balance. And we, 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 have, we have to judge in about our two or three minutes. Okay, we probably have to be two. Hang on again. We probably have to judge because so, uh, and judge and referee. So here's the deal, guys. Uh, uh, the last thing we're talking about, you know me, the sword. Okay. He'll probably give us a real fast thing. He's a he's a man, obviously a master of the long sword, of the straight Tai Chi sword. And you know how I was talking about you really can't understand power until you can transmit it through something like a sword. And and this we're not talking about lower level stuff. We're talking about guys who are trying to refine and cultivate their power. My question yeah. of, 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 of the Sifu was is why the sword? Why is it important? Why is it something that we all not just form, but actually touching swords, working, why that might be important. Yeah. In uh, Chinese martial arts, there are usually these four weapons that uh, represent, you know, the, the main uh, power of a weapon uh, that you train. Uh, the straight sword, the broad sword, the spear, and the staff. If you can have these four, it's already enough for you to use. So this kind of weapon, it helps you to actually train the whole body, to help the whole body work together. And it helps to project the energy all the way to the tip of the sword or the staff. Yeah. So in training the sword, the sword is actually termed as the uh, water. Sword is water element. Type. The water element. The so broad sword is termed as a metal element, you know, forceful. I think yeah. the word just the only thing is termed as the fire. Are you doing the interview? We're doing the interview. Come here real fast. Say hi. This is Steve, this is Sifu, this is Sifu Contest's son. Okay. He's gonna say hi to Temple Underground magazine. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. So your dad will be there in a second. The, the staff is termed as a wood element. The arms, the hand forms are the earth element. So the straight sword is actually belongs to the water element, which it drives like a dragon. It's soft, uh, softer than the other element. However, it's one of the what we call the smaller sword also because it looks soft but it can be very thin. You handle the sword, it also have a yin yang aspect of it. Uh, but you will learn how to project your energy more you know, when you're using the straight sword. You heard it. You heard it from somebody who I highly respect. Okay, I just met this gentleman. Hopefully, um, the learning is he, he, oh, I can tell by his nature that he always wants. I was sitting down on the floor, you know me. He said, sit up, stand up, or get in a chair. He's just that kind of a guy. He wants to meet you head on. Um, but at the same time, um, because of that, you tend to want to revere a guy a cat like this. You we're the same age, actually. But the truth of the matter is, uh, in, in terms of kung fu and being brotherly you know, kinship, 
Uh, he's way ahead of me with regard to the things that I require to make me a fuller martial artist. This is true for all, this is why Temple Underground exists, to meet people that can help complete us because if you're really on a journey, people like this will actually recognize that and they'll say, hey, uh, let me help you. Because if you're a better person, I'm a better person. And um, so I just met this the fool again. He gave me some real good wisdom. I'm going to be studying. Hopefully, he'll invite me back, and I'll actually learn bit more about silk rowing, okay, with regard to the classic Chin family style. Guys, thanks so much for looking at this. You know you know, you got to get your pen and paper out when, you, when I do an interview, so get it out. Get the notes down. Maybe we can get the, the seafood on the radio show one day. Okay, guys, you guys take it easy, and uh, we'll let you know about the referee and how it turned out. Okay, and again, look, I got a, this is a blue shirt. Yeah, look at the back. Oh, I guess in the back. To the back. See, boys, turn around, see. There you go, I'm an official. I'll see you. Okay, guys, you take it easy. I'll see you later. Bye bye.